Hi, Miss Marilyn. So your daughter Tracy told me that you wanted to try quilling. I am so excited. Now, keep in mind here, look, I am not a professional videographer. Um, hate making videos, but I am going to make this video for you so that you can watch it whenever you get ready, speed it up, slow it down, whatever you need to do so you um, can learn how to quill. I am going to be available to you whenever you need me so that if you have any questions, you'll be able to contact me. Um, we can discuss quilling. You can let me know how much you love it. See if you love it as much as I do. But I am going to now switch this camera, do whatever I need to do to switch it around so you can see what I'm doing. I am going to try to do it right-handed because I understand you're right-handed, I'm left-handed. So maybe some faux pas in this. But with all that being said, I am so happy to share quilling with you. Let me switch this camera and go ahead and get started. Okay, Miss Marilyn, in all the excitement, I don't even think I said my name, but I'm Cache. I work at Allstate. And quilling is my absolute passion. So at the top of the screen, you see some of the most basic shapes in quilling. I'm going to show you how to do these shapes. Um, and if you see at the top left, the loose coil, that is really the basis for most of the basic shapes in quilling. And then the, the one difference is the tight coil that you see at the bottom right. Um, that's just a loose coil tight where you don't let it unravel. So here we go. We're gonna start with the loose coil. And I'm also gonna show you, I'm sending you a kit and I'm also gonna show you what all is in the kit that you're gonna be receiving. So we're gonna start with, and let me just tell you, Miss Marilyn, this is a basic quilling tool. This little metal tip has a slot in it, but oh, it's so hard to see sometimes. So I'm gonna see if we can make it. I'm gonna try to turn it, see there? You see there's that slit in the quilling tool. That is where you're going to slide the paper into that slit. So let's see here. And this paper is five millimeter paper. So kind of just slide it in keep your paper at the top right there of the quilling tool oh miss marilyn i'm supposed to be doing this right-handed okay here we go told you there'd be a faux pas so again keep your paper at the top right here of the quilling tool in that slot and then the tip of the paper try to keep it as close to the edge of the tip as edge of the what do you call it, the slit as possible and then you'll start rolling the tool hand, the right hand, trying to keep the paper. If you use your fingers to guide, you can keep the paper straight and just keep rolling till you get to the end. And you're not really pulling on the paper, you're just using your two your pinchers just to hold it in place so it doesn't sprain and I'll show you what it looks like when you sprain them so once you get it this would be the tight coil so you would just pull it off slide it off that would be your tight coil now the loose coil you just sit it down and let it unravel what I do to close my coil you're gonna get some of these plastic um, precision tip tweezers. I'm letting this one coil out really big, but you'll just pick it up, pull back that tip. You're gonna get a bottle full of glue. You just put a little bit of glue and little glue is the best glue in this case. So put it on to where you can barely see it and you will just let it seal a little bit. It doesn't take long to seal on this thin paper. So that's a really big unraveled loose coil. But that's the basis. See, faux pas. That's the basis for all the shapes. No big deal. If it unravels, just go ahead and use your tweezers and it will seal. So basic 
loose coil. Teardrop, which is the very next one, it's a loose coil. You will simply, okay, wait, we're doing this right-handed again. So, ooh, right hand, okay. <laughs> so hold the end of the circle, which pinchers, and then the tip of the circle. That's all. You just pinch in the tip of the circle. There you have a loose coil. We are going to get another strip. We are going to go for the curved teardrop. Again, these are all loose coils, and I probably could have just made a whole bunch of loose coils before. But another loose coil. Using your pincher fingers just to keep the coil from springing. Use right hand finger to slide it off the cooling tool. And you're gonna get a circle sizer. You'll see I already have the coil in there. So this is just a foam circle sizer that I cut out of craft foam so you'd have something so you can keep, like if you're doing a flower and you want all of your petals to be the same shape, you'd use something like this circle sizer. So you've pulled your coil off of the quilling tool. You simply put it right on down into the circle sizer. It will spring out into the exact same size based on the circle you're using. Go ahead and pick it up where the end meets so that it stays the same shape. You're doing the same thing. You're gonna glue, wipe some off so that it's really not white anymore. You can use your tweezers. Go ahead and make it seal. So we are doing the curved teardrop and it is the same thing. Right-handed, I gotta keep remembering that. You're going to squeeze the tip. So you're basically just making another teardrop. And I like to use my quilling tool to make the curve because it makes it smooth. Oh. So you are going to just put the quilling tool there and just kind of roll it around so you get a shaped or a curved teardrop. Um, a lot of quillers use these for leaves, you, I mean, for flowers, for leaves, but you'll kind of find your own way to use them. And you get plenty of practice in seeing this coiling. So you've been seeing me do the coiling, rolling it this way, forward. I am going to now show you doing it, rolling it back. It's really up to you what your preference is, what you're comfortable with, but you can roll it towards you as well. Still using those pinchers to keep the paper from uh, going off kilter or springing. Same thing, just rolling the tool towards you. Again, we are putting it in the circle sizer. If it comes out, no problem, just go ahead and stuff that. I call it the tail. Um, stuff the tail back in there, pick it up where the tail meets the circle. Again, like I said, plenty of practice with this uh, basic coil. Okay, we are doing the Marquise shape. So same loose coil, you're just gonna dry it, uh, glue it, and then just pinch both ends. Try to do it evenly. There you go. That's a Marquise. And instead of rolling another coil, I'm just gonna show you the same. So Marquise, and you're doing the shape Marquise, it's just pretty much making kind of like an S shape. One hand up, one hand down, and kind of give it a good pinch there. Marquise. And that's another one people often use um, when making flowers. So that is basically 
uh, the shapes you're going to be making, learning. And I do recommend you practice that loose coil because here, let me show you something. When you are doing the loose coil and you haven't practiced it and it kind of gets loose, let me show you what happens here. So if you just do it this way and kind of the paper goes a little wonky and this way and that way, and you don't have it um, kind of under control with the pinchers, I'm gonna show you what happens when the paper is not kind of rolled straight. So I'm just rolling it kind of wonky here. And while you can work with something like this, you see it makes it a lot more difficult and you spend more time trying to correct the coil. <laughs> so let's see here. This is what a coil looks like when it's not kind of rolled straight. So it's a little springy, you see, and it makes it a lot harder to work with. So you can try to make a more shaped marquise, but then when you're trying to glue it, look at there, it's going to make your artwork a little off. Somebody's knocking at the door, Miss Marilyn, hold on. But I am back, so now I'm going to show you the items that you're going to be getting in the kit I'm sending. You are going to get this glitterized quilling tool because everything is better with glitter. So it's the same thing as this. It's just glitterized. It does have that, let's see, that slit in it. And you can kind of see there, it's got the slit in it. You're going to get the quilling tool. You are going to get a little bottle. Um, this is just um, a precision tip bottle of Elmer's glue. It really helps to um, control the amount of glue that goes on your pieces. And there is this, it's just a quilled glue stand, but it helps to go ahead and place your glue in it. Oh, that didn't work out for you. Place your glue in it to keep your glue ready to flow when you're ready to use it. Now, if the glue bottle is a little too difficult to squeeze, sometimes it is, I'm gonna include this extra little uh, nail brush bottle of glue, see if, if that makes it any easier. That works for you. It's just the same thing, bottle of glue. Um, if the quilling tool, the slotted quilling tool does not work for you, Here's a simple toothpick. Uh, let me see. Oh, right-handed. Um, oh, let's see. Let's figure out how to do this right-handed, Miss Marilyn. Okay. Nope, I don't think. Okay. <laughs> so if that quilling tool doesn't work for you, you can just roll the paper around the toothpick. I do apologize. And clearly, me and right-handed is not working here, but you can roll the paper around the toothpick. Once you get it started, you can simply take it off. And keep rolling with your fingers. So the toothpick is not necessary. It's just optional. I got to switch to the left hand here because I'll never finish getting it rolled with the right hand. So you see the difference in using a toothpick? There's not that folded uh, piece in the middle anytime you're not using a, a slotted tool, but you'll still get the same basic thing. S little scissors. I rarely ever use these in a lot of work, but they are so cute that I had to include them. Um, I rarely use the scissors because when you're quilling, when you're doing things like this and you tear paper at the end, it's actually easier to glue because the fibers just help the glue to stick. But I'm gonna include the scissors. I showed you the precision tip plastic tweezers. They of course have metal precision, twi precision tip tweezers. I have put uh, and I don't even know, I can't even keep counting how many times I've 
stuck myself with the metal precision twi tip tweezers. These are those. So I'm not gonna send those. I don't want you getting hurt. So I'm not gonna send those. There are also just regular eyelash tweezers that you can use. So you're gonna get both those tweezers. This is a pen book. It is magnetic. So when you're done using your pens, you can just, if you want to, put them back in the hole. It'll hold your pens so they don't fall out. Here, let me just move all that out. And I'm not worried about making this a pretty video because it's just for you, Miss Marilyn. Not saying you're not special, but you know what I mean. I'm not a professional. So this is a glue card. Um, this is when you have your pieces and you want to mount them on something, like you have a frame or something, or you're making a card and you want to glue your pieces onto the card. I'm just going to show you this. You would simply just squeeze a little glue on, grab one of your pieces, kind of dip it, press it down a little bit, let it get a little glue. And you are going to go ahead and pick it up and then place it on whatever you're gluing it on. See that? That's what that glue card is for. Um, and the great thing about this little plastic glue card is that once the glue is dry, you can just kind of peel it off. You are also going to get this little foam pad. This foam pad works with these pins. So let's say you're doing a flower and you have like seven or eight petals and you need to, you want to place all your petals together before you um, glue it to make sure you have everything where you want it. You would simply use this pen and I like to use two to keep that initial petal where I want it. So that's how I would hold that petal in place so it's not moving. And then with your, you just kind of place all your petals. Yes, it's a different petal, but that's okay. You kind of place all your petals around how you want them to go. Just keep placing till you get the number of petals that you want. Um, once you know that everything is where you want it to be, again, here we are. We are gluing these in place so that they don't move. So if you have it like that, this is just one way to do it. You can pin everything down and then go in between and glue in between. Not a lot of glue in between all the pieces. Let it dry and then you'd be able to pick this one single piece up. Um, now you don't have to use the pins. A lot of people don't. My hands might be a little too shaky sometimes, but you can simply just put the glue on. Glue, 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 glue however you want it and let it take shape however it's going to take shape so that is the basic process now this flower is a little different but it's the same concept it is pretty much all these little petals glued in place and this right here is what we call on edge quilling i know it's messy but this is, you can use just regular strips. You would again, let me move this out the way. You would again use this glue card. Let me find a strip here. Now here is where you can use the scissors um, because when you're doing on edge quilling is what that's called, or stems like that, you, you can have, you know, straight edges. So, you would do the same thing, you just a little bit of glue, get your stem. I know it's blue, but you know what I mean. And you would just dip it in the glue. And again, this is still the case where pretty much everything in quilling, the least amount of glue, the better. So that you're not really seeing too much glue on your strip. And I'm gonna use whatever this is here. This is my smart hand massager manual. Just as a piece of paper, again, you just stick it on. You do not apply a lot of pressure, just kind of tap it 
lightly. And that would be your stem that you would place in a flower. Now, this was that curved teardrop shape. Here's a leaf, we'll use, there's a leaf. Either side, you just place them on either side. You got a leaf for your flower. That's it. When you um, want some less full or more full strip or coils or whatever, I don't use exact measurements. I simply use halves, quarters, eighths, sixteenths, and such. So I just, I can't mess with the ruler and all those measurements. I just tear them in half. And again, tearing is great instead of cutting because it helps with the glue adhesion. So, uh, what was this? This was a quarter of a strip. I'm going to put it in one of these. So if you want your flower petals or whatever you make them, you want them to be smaller, there you go. That's a quarter strip. Um, I'm going to put this half strip in that same circle size so you can see the fullness of the coil with the different paper lengths. So quarter strip, this one is a half strip. And here, let me go ahead and do this one. Let's see if I can get this that small. This is a full strip in this same, this is probably like a 10 millimeter circle. So you can see the exact same circle size. You're gonna get 13 mini packs of quilling strips. These are some pastel colors because by the spring, well before the spring, I'm sure you'll be a pro you'll be able to make a little spring bouquet to get some spring colors there's 10 strips of each color and you're also going to get this pack of 25 practice strips so you want to use these first to start learning to quilt to make sure you can get your coils and then these are the ones you'll use when you're making actual projects these are a little shorter. They're just regular copy paper that I've cut up for you to practice on. And they are wider. These are quarter inch width strips, which are just a little bit thicker than these five millimeter project strips. This is also a pattern that I'm gonna print out for you so you'll have a frame of reference of what you're gonna be making or what you can make. Um, it's not in the video, but I'm also sending you a 4x6 frame that you can easily pop out the glass, put a piece of pastel card stock that I'm including behind the glass, and then glue or mount your flowers onto the frame for a pretty spring picture. I hope you enjoy it.